Hi friends, in today's video we're taking a look at my current blush collection, specifically the newer ones that I purchased from Sephora's sale. I did pick up uh, NARS blush. I did. And I wanted to compare the different undertones, the shades to what I recently bought. I might not apply everything because that is a ton of removing and applying. We'll see what we can get through, but a few makeup announcements. If you want to skip over to the demos, make sure to check out the timestamps down below, or you could scrub here to see the chapters pop up and click on demo star or however I name it if you just want to get to that. The first update about the NARS blush, I wanted to pick up one of their new reformulated shades. Not a new shade, unfortunately. Uh, the Sephora I visited had just two new shades, both of them being sold out, but I decided to pick up Infatuated, which is a an existing shade, but again, reformulated, and we'll swatch this when we get to the comparisons. I decided to visit Nordstrom because they do have a Prada beauty counter in hopes that I can see Sedona in action. Unfortunately, two things. They had Sedona, but not the refill. They had the other eye dimension refills, but not Portrait. Portrait is not even listed on the Nordstrom product page. And I swatched all the shades and I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Shannon, one of the attendants there, where she saw me crouching down in trying to swatch all the shadows because the display was all the way on the bottom. And she was like, why are you like that? Let me just take it out and put it on the table. So kind in helping me and just allowing me to swatch as much as I needed in seeing all these shadows in action in person because as lovely as they are online and I did pick a pulse or no pulp which one was it from the Sephora sale I love it to death I had my eye on portrait which unfortunately is out of stock but it's in stock at Bloomies do I want to buy it absolutely but I wanted to see the other curations because there were some that I was going back and forth about and I when I swatched poetry I know, just hear me out. When I swatched poetry, I was like, oh man. Specifically, well, let me show you how it looks untouched first. This right here, when Shannon saw this shade on my wrist, she was like, you gotta get that one. And my goodness, the shine on this color is tremendous. And yes, although they didn't have portrait, now poetry was on my radar heavy on the radar and Cynthia who was nice enough to check if they had Sedona in stock came back from the storage room has Sedona but unfortunately as the entire component and not just the refill what I lost in a possible discount yes I could have saved 15% off poetry and the Sedona refill I could have. During this time when the economy is up in flames and eggs cost $50, what I got back in return was a lovely experience at Nordstrom. And I know that's probably not enough for some where if you are on a tight budget, you will most certainly have left there with nothing. And if you still wanted these items like I did, would have purchased them from Sephora. Even with the 15% discount, it makes a difference considering the high price tag for these makeup products. I decided to buy Poetry and the whole <laughs> unit of Sedona and not the refill because they didn't have it. Two reasons, there wasn't a tester for Sedona and because Cynthia went out of her way to go to the storage room and, and actually brought back quite a few items because they needed to redo the entire display, I heard. I just bought it as well as poetry because she took the time in showing me the different products of Prada Beauty and gave me two full-size samples. This is a sample. This is a sample, not what you get from Sephora, those tiny plastic jars with the flip top that leaks. I mean, it is a nuisance to deal with. Cynthia applied MN60, and I'm not crazy about the foundation, actually. It's okay. The color match is fantastic. I say that because she applied it with the brush. The brushes are... <laughs> Are crazy soft they're synthetic but they're they're expensive I didn't like how it looked a few hours before it appeared like it was sitting on my skin and it was apparent that I had a foundation on I still wanted to apply this on camera for you because if you were interested in the product foundation if you convinced yourself that it's something for you and you are my a shade twin, then I wanted to apply this on camera, but she hopped over to the Valentino display and applied their V highlighter or V primer. I forgot what the actual name is. I'll make sure to post it down below. Listen, this is an exquisite liquid highlighter. 
is pretty much like the Dior Star Filter, but this has more of a rose gold look to it. Unfortunately, it is perfumey. It is, whoo! And for context, I don't do well with fragrance. I'm very sensitive to it, so someone who wears perfume on the daily might not find this to be overwhelming, but if you are like me and you were eyeing this Valentino product and you are wondering about it, it is fragranced. More so than the Dior Star Filter, which is probably why maybe I misinterpreted their comment, but I was under the impression that the Star Filter and Maximizers didn't have fragrance. That's what it sounded like, but I detected fragrance from those products and it's because I think I'm just highly sensitive to scent overall, but the Star Filter scent does not overwhelm me like the Valentino one that's what it looks like however if, if you wanted that product I'll take a L for you guys and apply the Valentino on just so you can see it in action you know what I mean I have the tissues nearby in case I get into a sneeze frenzy Cynthia applied the Valentino highlighter the Prada foundation she even applied some eyeshadows we were talking about Prada beauty it was fantastic that she took the time to show me the product, to just play. Not only did she give me these samples, but she also gave me two samples of the Prada Universal Balm, which by the way, is their top seller. They can't <laughs> keep it in stock, always flying off the shelves. I'm like, oh really? That's interesting. Now you're probably wondering, yes, I do have caramel on and my poor caramel broke. I broke it. I applied too much pressure to it and my, <laughs> my poor lipstick bullet is mutilated. But to get a better look at both Caramel and Sedona, comparatively, it's time for you to come in a little closer. This is Caramel by itself. Before I get into the Sedona swatch, I wanted to apply the Valentino <laughs> liquid highlighter. It reminds me of the Dior, but it's a little more liquidy. Ooh, this is, whoo. Woo. Maybe I could uh, get used to it, but I gotta give it to the color of this product. It's so you see the rose goldness kind of warms up my complexion a little bit. If you wanna see this compared to Dior Star Filter in 3N, this is the Star Filter in 3N. It's a little more creamy, right? Ooh, I could already, <laughs> I could feel the sneeze just start to creep up from underneath, my goodness. Now here is the Prada foundation in MN60. Yes, medium neutral 60. I had a hard time trying to uh, decipher what shade I would be from the online swatches, but this is what MN60 looks like from the Prada foundation. And it's a, it's a pretty good match. Why don't we, Mm -hmm. Swatch my beloved Suku in 040 to, in order to see a comparison to Prada. I thought the Suku would look deeper because the Prada on me looked a little light yesterday. All right, that's good to know. I will actually apply this with my fingers. So I'm taking a little spatula here and applying it in order to warm up the product. I found when you warm up the product before applying it, it has a, a just a vastly different finish than you would get from applying with a brush or a sponge. I just find the texture better fuses with the skin and allows you to build the coverage accordingly in a way that you can control how it appears, where it won't appear heavy on the skin, overly made up. And because I have, remember this guy, I was like loathing on my uh, Blooming Romance video, is Scab. So now we're just waiting for it to fade a little bit more. And this actually looks nice under the eyes as well. Cynthia applied this color under the eyes. Not too bad, you know what I mean? And the texture is quite light. That's what I noticed immediately when she applied this on the skin is quite light. It actually has a tint quality about it in terms of the texture and fluidity, but I think more of medium level coverage, but that ain't bad. You know what I mean? That That's not bad. I like, I like how it looks initially, but again, I wasn't crazy about how it appeared a few hours afterwards. It is now 2 p.m. Eastern. What I'll do is I'll keep this on 
well, if I apply it again, if I decide to do multiple demos, we'll see how this goes, okay? Stick with me. If I decide to keep this on, then I will report back how it looks like a few hours after this application and maybe applying it with my fingers makes a difference, right? When you are working the product in the skin this way and not allow it to settle, but that's, that's a good match. This is a good match. MN60, if you have the eye on the Prada, you couldn't decide which color to get. This is the one. All right, all right, let's do a little wipey wipe. And you know what? We gotta do these brows, man. As much as I am now a uh, Prada soft matte enthusiast, I have not forgotten about my Suku Moisture Glaze. Absolutely not. I think having a shiny lip product is ideal for the summer. Matte and shiny, right? I think it's fine to rotate both finishes within your makeup routine. That's why I didn't buy any shiny products during this sale because I'm like, you better not with how many moisture glazes you got. And I have my eye on that limited edition shade from their pre-summer collection, from Suku's pre-summer collection, which maybe I missed because I forgot to alert myself or uh, put an alert on my calendar for when that collection goes live on Cult Beauty and Liberty London. So it's probably gone, whatever. But I love caramel. I definitely think it is still my lips, but better. Maybe slightly, just slightly desaturated. And I say that because when you see Sedonia or will see Sedona, Sedonia, sorry, it definitely has a little more red in there. And I would understand if that, you might prefer that shade because if worn alone with no other makeup on the face will liven up the complexion because of that slightly more red tone where this is more of like a muted brown pink and i understand if you wish to have more color from your barely there lip product but i think why sedona works beautifully well is because it is soft matte so it's not heavy on the color delivery it's still a uh, soft overall in the finish so now that you've seen caramel again let's apply sedona and just so you see what this looks like as the bullet and let me or allow me to swatch caramel on my hand not hand wrong body parts on my arm i might end up buying a caramel refill i love the shade so much that i i think i predict i will finish it and sedona right by it caramel sedona you can see it's more reddish undertone overall is more warmer delivery and here is sedona on the lips see it's hard for me to choose a favorite because i think this shade as much as i love caramel for sure I understand why it might be more appealing to you because it does have that warmer undertone and it does just add a little more liveliness to the complexion because of that shading of still desaturated. I think it's not in your face red, but you can detect there's more like clay versus the pink coolness because caramel is described to be a cool brown nude this is a warm brown nude i believe the product page states i'll just post it up next to me in case if it doesn't but this is gorgeous i'm so happy with sedona and yes because it wasn't the refill i now have another component which i'm not bad about right i'll have one component to be at home and to travel with whatever because the refills only retail for 40 and both component and refill retail for 50. And for the eyeshadow refills, the entire component retails for 80. This one here, while the refills just retail, just, sorry, 65. And I mistakenly said on one of my comment replies that the compact is magnetic. It is not. My apologies for that. And if I can go back and find that comment, I will edit it. It does have this here, but it lifts off. It lifts off. It lifts off because the way it's constructed, you can see it better from this side. You push from the base and that's what lifts off the refill. The actual refill is not magnetic. The component is to close. 
This here is magnetic, but not the base of the compact. And you basically just drop in the refill, but it will pop out if you turn the compact over. The way to dislodge is to push through this triangle here from the base of the pallet. So my apologies that I misinformed you on that. I'll make sure to retrieve that comment, but I just wanted to say that here. So if there's any clarification or if you found online that it is not in fact magnetic and you're like, Elise is a lower, you're absolutely right. Wanted to clarify that, but yes, I think it's now time to get into the swatches. I'll swatch on this side and I wanted to start with the Final Surgeon's Skin Spark Blush Bombs because those shades I immediately thought of when I was swatching all these like beigey, agey, peachy shades. But actually, maybe I'll start off swatching the newer shades that I purchased. We have the House Labs. Wanted to show a few shades from Danessa's Blooming Romance. What else, what else, what else? The LYS Glow Stick. Not the Rare Beauty, unfortunately, as I exchanged that for uh, Dior's Glow Maximizers. These are out of control. I want bronze now. Let's start with House Labs, yes? And I made sure to include House Labs did I include House Labs on this list? I sure didn't. Do you have a thousand tabs open on your Chrome browser? Cause I do. Let's start off with House Labs Fire Moon and that is a beige peach. Beautiful consistency, smooth to the touch, matte as you see, fantastic pigmentation. Next we have the LYS Higher Standard Cream Glow Blush Stick in Focused, a warm cinnamon pink. And unlike the House Labs, you see that this is a cream product, not a powder one. And it has a shimmer finish, but nice, on the blend. It doesn't look overly glittery when you apply this on your cheeks as I discovered when I first tried it. Now I wanted to swatch Dreamy and Desire from Blooming Romance. Dreamy, I think it was described to be like a hibiscus pink and Desire a peach. A warm peach at that and don't, wouldn't these look lovely together? You could apply this velvet pomade first and then fire moon on top for the reinforcement. Hopefully the lighting stays as it is because it has been wildly unpredictable today with this weather. <laughs> Hey, April. Danessa's Blurring Balm Flush in Jubilee, a soft terracotta. You can see immediately this is more of a hybrid product. It is a cream to powder formula, much like the, or very much like the Blurring Balm, where as you apply it on the skin, it has a soft matte finish and becomes more of a powder finish and crazily pigmented, as you can see. Now let's get into these final surgeons. I gotta start with Ignite. <sighs> Ignite is a rose chai, and these are more of like a moussey formula, quite unique within my makeup collection. Although it looks shiny on the swatch, it does apply, yes, soft matte, but with a bit of a sheen. Is that is that actually quite lovely? Next skin spark we have is Inferno, and this is a terracotta how to rose, kind of like Jubilee, but Jubilee is a little lighter than Ignite. Inferno, excuse me. Next we have Kindle, which is a cinnamon peach. Let me do another one here, pick up more products. So there, there we go. Hmm, kind of like a little more depth than Fire Moon. Fire Moon almost looks orange compared to Kindle. Kindle is giving a little more desaturated burnt. You know what I mean? And I have the Melt Cream Blush Light in Sandy Cheeks. I had to throw this one in because I think it was Fire Moon when I swatched it for the first time. I was like, that kind of looks like Sandy Cheeks. Oh my gosh, it's not available anymore. Okay, well, we're gonna make up a shade description. This is giving burnt peach. <laughs> <laughs> Even though this looks more intense than the Velvet Pomade, I guess I have to apply this again. But when I applied it, I felt it didn't have the same vibrancy as Desire from Blooming Romance, but I, I will, again, have to give that a, a whirl. Benefits Terra, a golden brick red. Basically, Inferno but in powder form. Benefit Starla, a rosy bronze. Tough to see, I know, let me swatch with another finger. Perhaps I had too much product on there. This definitely shows up a little more pinky. It's not as robust as Terra, 100%. But I like to use this because it is a satin finish, lower on the cheeks and a little bit higher here on this region for some highlight effect. And yes, I thought about the Chanel, specifically from their, their Equinox collection that I think released like last summer, the 797 Beige Ecrel. This one right here, 
Listen, I was like 100%, right? Because this is an, a phenomenal shade. Giving a little more burnt peach, like this is Sandy Cheeks, Kindle, no, this is Kindle. This is Desire. So that's within that wheelhouse of color. I'll swatch it again so you could get a, a better idea. There it is. It's still in the peach realm, right? We're still in the peach realm. Now you know we gotta get into, I know you wanna say it. Paradise Venus, where are you? The quintessential terracotta shade from Pat McGrath's Divine Blush Collection. A demi-matte as opposed to exclusively matte or satin, which is why I feel this, the color and the finish they work well together. Oh my goodness. Basically, Ignite. Inferno. Why do I keep saying Ignite? These two right here, whew, my goodness. Together with Focus. Focus has like a little more pink in there compared to Paradise Venus. And she also has Paradise Glow, which were the duos that I think released the following year because of the more beigey side in the compact right? That's going to have a little more pink as opposed to the original Paradise Venus. Let me go back to the NARS product page because my goodness, I always try to economize my uh, arm space, but it always fails. Infatuated. Oh, yes. Infatuated is a matte deep plum berry. For some reason, when I swatched it in Sephora, it took on more of like a bronzy feel to it, but it's okay. I have to move arms. My apologies, family. There we go. This is infatuated. And although it is plum berry, isn't that a lovely shade? Oh my goodness. It is beautiful. And the reformulation, the talc free one, much like what the House Labs is giving in terms of feel and consistency with the powder, silky smooth on the blend. Great pigmentation, but an indication from that swatch, I feel like it's not gonna be heavy on the first drop off. It's, it's gonna give you room to build it up accordingly. And lastly, I wanted to compare these shades to a few Suku ones that I have. This is their Pure Color Blush shade from their Winter 2023 collection, 145. This is giving more of a, like a satin finish on the blend. But my, you know, remember how when I applied this shade for the first time, I was just wild about it. And compared to Paradise Venus, you know, is giving something. And also kind of mm, not quite the same as the Chanel. The Chanel is a little more peachy. And lastly, from their pre-summer collection that just released, this is more of their bronze, bronzy shade, 149. Definitely will appear, I think, more brown overall than their winter shade. And my apologies, I need to, we need the microfiber towel because when you swatch too much and you don't properly wipe, then it starts to hard pan the, uh, the powders and we don't want that. So let's swatch it again. There we go. That's a little better. This definitely applies a lot better on the cheeks than how you see it in the swatch. And if you want to take a look at how that looks like in a in a demo demo, and then you can head over to that video and you'll find the timestamp down below. What do we do now, friends? I think we should apply the NARS. The NARS is, or do you want to, I could do these, but I feel these are in a different league of their own. These are more highlighters and I wanted to stick to like, the more exclusive cheek products for this comparison uh, portion of the video. Oh, my apologies. I still have to do Pat's Color Stick Balm in Sun Kissed Adduction is a warm sienna. Warm sienna. Where can we put this next to? I'm gonna put this under Inferno. Oh my gosh, they're like almost the same. Almost the same is, is giving definitely Terracotta, the product page says warm sienna. Sure, we'll take both. I want to apply infatuated. That's what I want to do. Question is, what brush should we pick? This is my Bichero CCH brush. I think it is, I think it's Dai Saikoho, no, Sokoho goat hair. Fantastic brush. It is a round flat. Here we go. Hey, pick up. I... 
that's pretty. And the fact that I just pounced that powder on, but it managed to apply smoothly, okay? Highly impressed, highly impressed. Wow, this, I hate how the, <laughs> such a strong word to use. The NARS blush formula, phenomenal. I mean, I, I'm not swirling and twirly as I like to do sometimes with blush application. I am tapping and the blend looks smooth, all right? It doesn't look chalky, doesn't look harsh. My heavens. Okay, very good. We need some here though. We need some here. And I'm looking at all, <laughs> all of our selects. I feel like something peachy would look nice with the plum berry. You feel, are you feeling that combination? I feel it in my, in my soul right now. Let's try that. And picking up, <laughs> no other than blooming romance. I want to apply desire. This is a Mizuho brush, and I like the smaller brush head here because I think an, uh, an appropriate size to pick up this texture with. And I'm applying that shade lower on my face and then pulling it up towards infatuated. So you have a, more of that heavy color serving on the cheekbones and then carrying the lighter peach shade down closer to the nose. This is something that you can absolutely do if you have a lot of blush product like I do myself and you don't want to just use one. Absolutely not. Use as many as you like. I think when you choose the right colors that complement each other well, not only in color but in finish, maybe something more matte on the hollows, and then you can rely on the demi matte satin shimmery formulas on the center or more on the apples of the cheeks. You know what I mean? Let's go with melt. I'm I'm thinking because I did want to see this in action compared. Okay. Okay, this does have, I misspoke, I misspoke. Sandy Cheeks does have more color than Desire. I mean, look at this side of my face versus this. And while I understand I am layering product, Desire amplified Sandy Cheeks. It most certainly did. But I think on the first get, Sandy Cheeks does have a little more color than Desire which is fine, but ooh, Sandy Cheeks is goaded. I remember how I gushed over this shade when I first tried it on. It's still, to this day, one of my most favorite blush shades of all time. Be look, look at me. That means we gotta go in with some of this highlight, man, and it, it has to, it has to be this. The Dior Glow Maximizer in Peachy, because um, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Double tap at the same time. I'm looking at, well, I'm looking at two shades, actually, shame on me. Bronze and pearly. Pearly, I think, is just that universal highlight that, depending on your skin tone, it has that just gleam, just super high beam finish, higher here on the cheekbones. I don't think I would apply pearly lower on my cheeks. And something else I noticed too, when I first tried the Dior Maximizer in store, I applied it on the back of my hand and I wasn't impressed by the texture because I, I that's just not where it was meant to be applied. And I wanted to convince myself desperately that I didn't need this product because I didn't want to buy a smudge. I'm trying to like not be seduced, but I told one of my clients, do not put this on. If you apply this on the cheeks, it's a wrap. You're done, you're done. You will head over to checkout with however many maximizers you decided to test on your cheeks that day and will probably leave with all of them. I applied Rosie only and I just picked up Peachy because I remember seeing Amra from Amra's beauty blog when she first got the maximizer and I saw this photo or this video, I was like, it has to be mine. What on earth is that? And make sure you take it up all the way to the under eyes, 100%, because the formula itself just melts into the skin. There are no lines of demarcation. It applies well with whatever product you decide to layer on top, and my goodness. And this product foundation ain't bad. It ain't bad, but we're gonna keep it on for a few hours, okay? How does it look with Sedona? Sedona's pretty. Oh, it's pretty. You wanna see poetry in action, don't you? I can hear you. Okay, let's get this primer around the eyes. While Cynthia was applying the foundation on me, 
I was asking her, you know, do you think Prada Beauty will release blush? And she was like, what? The lipstick is blush. I'm like, that's true. And was saying, uh, Mucha, what is her, how do you pronounce her first name? Yes, Mucha, Mucha Prada is super economical. <laughs> A lot of the uh, Prada Beauty items are meant to be multifunctional. You want blush, you put that lipstick on the cheeks and this ain't a bad color to apply on the cheeks. Ooh, ooh, now, <laughs> oh, I got some room here. We got a little bit of room. Since we applied that beautiful metallic, here is the satin shade right next to it. That's like a, a soft peachy beige. Next, we have the hyper matte, which is, it, you know what this looks like? The deep shade from Subversive. It's like a bark brown, but with a, a plummy tone to it. And this, this emerald, Hold on, again, you see the swatch, might not be impressed, but what I, but when I swatched Pulse for the first time and how that color applied, I was like, nah, sh shut up, you don't know anything. <laughs> I've been dying to try a few things actually. Excuse me. Oh my goodness, I wanna swoosh the, the emerald like on my inner corner, 100%. I'm gonna take this color here a tapity tap and go to town. Go to freaking town. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> I am such a simp for these eye dimension shadows, friends. What is happening? Do I want all of them now? Absolutely. But listen, I gotta hold my horses because if I do purchase another one, I definitely should just purchase it from Sephora. Unfortunately, portrait uh, at this moment is out of stock online but the rose gold one i could i could pull it up here hope which is the apricot and the the pink shade on the right the blue is pretty but when i swatched this at nordstrom that middle shade was pulling heavy orange on me which is fine like i'm not adverse to warm shades i have plenty of them in my collection but because of that i wasn't as wooed by it as I originally was online from an online perspective. Perfusion is sold out, but I love that chartreuse and unfortunately portrait is sold out, but it's okay. We're gonna um, <laughs> figure it out. Bloomy still has portrait in stock. I'm really taking this out, my goodness. I just want it to look like a peacock. Thank you for indulging me, family. Let's take this softer satin shade through the center of the lid using a, a rather large eyebrow brush. Ma'am, are you okay? Eyeshadow brush, and I'm tapping that on the center. Oh, that's pretty. That's a lovely shade. I know you can barely see it on my lid, but isn't that just mm, one of those moments where you need to slap something on your lid, but you don't want it to be too much, just enough to give the lid color and some sheen so it doesn't look dry stop it right now we gotta do listen let me let me get the right brush for this task all right i don't want to screw it up we gotta go in with this shade <sighs> okay two ways two ways maybe i'll do one way on here and the other on this one okay the first way is to just start tapping on the outer v carefully pull it through the crease although i don't want it to look heavy on the inner part of my crease. I want it to diffuse a little bit more and which is why I, I made sure to place the majority of the color on the outer part of the lid. And I'll take a smaller brush here, same color, and I'll start to pull it here a quarter in of my lash line. You know what I mean? Not too much. Hey. And what I was contemplating was to use that darker color here on the lash line. Cynthia did say that you can wear these shadows wet, which I think 
now that I know that, we'll wet the brush and then use that to create the liner. However, since this will be our liner side, I'll take the metallic shade, woohoo, and tap that on the middle of the lid and then slightly out. And Cynthia was also saying that you could use these shadows as highlighter if you wanted. Now, I think these are a little too metallic for my taste to be applied on the cheekbones. But I see, I see what Mucha was looking to do. I, I understand. Okay, we're gonna take that dark shade. We're gonna spritz that brush and let's start sketching out. I'm switching brushes, a smaller shadow liner type of a situation because believe it or not, it's easier for me to sketch out the uh, shadowing with a flat brush. Oh, that's pretty. If you were wondering how that shade compares to the one from Pulse. Yes. I could quickly swatch it for you. Let's get a little bit of a swatchy swatch and I'll do it under. So this has more of like a dark brown. Let me see, here's Poetry and here's Pulse. Pulse has more of like an eggplant to it. Whereas the shade from Poetry, there's more brown. Does that make sense to you? What I also want to try well, two things actually. Let me grab a smaller brush because I want to see how the metallic shade appears if I placed it over the emerald. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, oh, that's pretty. That's a nice way to go. What do you think, friends down below? Do you think that's, that's taking away from the sage? Well, it is, obviously, but if you wanted to incorporate the metallic in this way, I think a fantastic opportunity to do so. And you could also pull it further across your lower lash line. Hey. Or you can keep the lower lash line empty, right? And just keep it as is. That's that's fine to do because we already have that metallic shade on the on the lid. You know what I mean? Do you want to see this with caramel? I can hear you from the other side, okay? I understand. Let me reapply a little bit of foundation here around, ooh, that was too much, around the uh, the lip. And I would use my fingers, but <laughs> they're a little uh, preoccupied with all the swatching I've been doing. And I don't want the uh, shadow color to bleed. Like that would have been <laughs> looking gray around my lip. Bad idea. I will have to use my fingers well, I could just press the bullet. It's just poor bullet. Oh my gosh, it's so broken. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend this. I think I have to get a jar. Yeah, and um, crush it or smush it. This shade, Caramel, I could get away with blotting and it going over my lip line. So donut, not so much. You know what I mean? How would this look, however, with the candid liner from Hourglass? Well, let's give it a whirl, shall we? Mm. Mmm, mmm. Ooh, that's nice. I understand it could be a little too like con contrasting, but isn't that kind of like, I like that though. You know what I mean? Oh, that's, things are happening and we like it. I think it's time for us to apply some lashes and we'll be right back. Here are the final looks or looks 1.5. Using a few of my blush products, the Prada Eye Dimensions in Portrait, excuse me, Poetry. I'm still on Portrait. And just showcasing a realistic routine now that I have all these items that I acquired. I love to cocktail, combine shades, different finishes. And although some of them look similar, it's just to show that generally it is easier to dive into your makeup collection when you love the products that you have, that they're easy to apply. When everything is on the same wavelength, tools, application, shades, texture, when it's all there for you, it makes the routine fun and inevitably will encourage creativity where maybe you'll try different combinations you didn't think you would like, would be possible. And my goodness, I have not been this excited about makeup in a while. I think because one, I try not to spend so much. Uh, number two, my goodness, when it hits, it hits. And number three, because of my unique position, I do know I have to meet halfway, 
right? Because in order for the algorithm to not forget who I am so that it could keep recommending my videos, I still have to produce content that showcases new products, new releases, but I have just been far more selective in that department that I am not as impulsive, that I'll wait on it, see how I feel about it. The impulsive purchase I think I can correctly identify is Blooming Romance. The moment I saw that palette, it had to be mine. And I am so happy that I have purchased it. It has been a joy to use. When I filmed my Blooming Romance video, I had a blast, an absolute blast. And when editing my footage, I'm like, oh, that looks good. That looks good too. It all looks good. I am officially now in the clutches of Prada Beauty. <laughs> and Nordstrom is actually holding an event on the 20th. So it'll be fun to take a deeper dive into their line. Yes, I don't mind if they apply their skincare and other products on me because I'll wash it off at the end of the day. I think it's just nice to be surrounded by experts in that brand from that brand and receiving more insight about the concept, the products in the brand, and just learning more about it if there is more to learn, which I'm sure there is I will probably end up getting portrait at some point because that other metallic shade from that eye dimensions refill blew me away because this one was just oh my gosh this rose gold metallic Shannon agrees all right and Sedona I am completely and utterly happy with and I was starting on this point earlier in the video but I think I just became distracted with something else that, yes, I did not save the amount of money I could have if I bought the poetry refill and Sedona refill from Sephora, but I didn't want to leave there empty handed and I know I have that right as a customer to say no. I absolutely am aware of that, but just seeing and experiencing the effort Cynthia delivered in just taking care of me as a client, as a walk-in, and I felt bad. I did feel bad just saying, okay, thank you, and not buying anything from her. Fine, I took the L. I, I spent an extra 40 something dollars when I didn't have to. It's fine. I'll make it up with YouTube AdSense, which I haven't been doing well with yes but I'm sure I could cover the 40 with with your views at least you know what I mean we'll break even with that are there lipstick shades that I have my eye on for the Prada refills yes but I'm happy with Sedona and caramel I mean I think you can tell from the enthusiasm from this video and my previous ones that I absolutely love this formula the color especially caramel is just dead set on it just hit the target well, for my lip color, for my complexion, as well as Sedona, I can see if you prefer Sedona over caramel, but mm, it's, it's pretty, it depends. It depends on what I apply on the rest of my face, but Sedona is nice to have on its own because it gives a little more liveliness, I understand. I get it. And now with the glow maximizers, mm, I'm gonna have an absolute ball with those suckers. I mean, look, look at my cheeks. They have shine and shimmer, but it doesn't look heavy on the skin whatsoever. And here are some close-ups of my skin with the Prada foundation underneath the NARS Infatuated Blush, Sani Cheeks, Danessa's Blooming Romance in Desire with the Dior Glow Maximizer in Peach. It's just phenomenal. Phenomenal with how everything turned out. And yes, I did order Mineral Scapes from Byredo. Short story to make shorter, hopefully. I originally was supposed to be at Maddie's, but her owner's trip got canceled. And at the time, because I was anticipating being there over the weekend, I entered Maddie's address. And when I found out I wasn't gonna be there and Maddie's owner was nice enough to send it back, it originally was supposed to arrive today, but the update last night said it'll be delivered on Monday. So right, on Monday, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna make all the comparisons because I do have Prism Remembrance and Kalahari. Flora Kalahari, that was the name of it. We'll get into the swatches and the comparisons, but yes, Mineral Scapes is on her way. I cannot wait to dive in and apply those shadows with all the complexion products that I now have is going to be a ball. Let me know if you ordered anything else from Sephora. Yes, I broke my contract that I made with myself, but I'm happy with the products that I purchased in breaking that contract. And if I get anything else, I'll let you know. Right now is looking to be a caramel refill and the uh, Eye Dimensions refill in pulp or pure with the blue. Or both. <laughs> I'll see you down in those comments, family. And until then, that is 
a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you in here again with another review tutorial. Prada Beauty Extravaganza. Maybe why not? I'll collect footage at the Prada Beauty event and make a video about it. Or we'll do more blush demos and definitely getting into mineral scapes. Take care and I will see you again soon.